Uh, my name is Callum Scott. I am a singer and songwriter from the UK, probably best known for my first single, which was a cover of uh, Robin's Dancing on My Own. I keep dancing on my own. And I released my debut album on The Human in March of 2018 uh, and toured it that year and had the year of my life. And I'm now writing album two. What's the first album that you bought? The first album I bought and the first artists I saw live was uh, Spice Girls. Spice, I believe, was the first album. Do you remember the first song or musician that resonated with you? I, I, there's never been an artist that has moved me the way that Adele's moved me. And just when she sings, she sings with such conviction and she sings like it's the last time she's going to sing. Yeah, she really, really resonates with me. What's your favorite queer anthem and why? I mean, I would be I would be pretty stupid if I didn't say dancing on my own. I keep dancing on my own. The song that Robin did um, was just sensational. And I've had time to speak to both Robin and Patrick Berger, who is the other songwriter on the on the record. They really crafted that song. Like they didn't mess around. They wasn't going, oh well, that sounds about right. Yeah, spin around in circles. Yeah, that's that's cool. Like they went to clinical detail about the song and about how they can best phrase certain things. And she's an incredibly powerful role model in the in the gay community, um, in the LGBTQ community. Uh, and a lot of um, a lot of her fans um, love her for what she stands for and what she does and the songs that she produces. And it's got to be that. It's got to be. It's got to be that. How have you been spending your time in isolation? There's varying degrees of how I've spent my time. I spent the first week, I would guess, in my pants, playing Call of Duty, drinking wine. Um, and generally not doing anything. And then I think the second week I was like, I can't, I can't keep this up. So I'm gonna need to like <laughs> get back into my fitness, get back into my studio. My time has become more and more productive. Um, I've I've rattled through um, I've rattled through quite a lot of music now. I, I realised that I actually had more songs than I thought for the second album um, that were up to the standard, and so. I've started collating songs together with the label of what I think is the strongest and then just recently I went down to Abbey Road Studios in London and recorded a few of those and it felt really good to just get back into a into a rhythm with, um, with music and, and life. And how has it been uh, writing your second album? It's kind of been an up and down experience because the first album I had all of my life to draw experience from, you know, everything from like, you know, my sexuality and the, and the problems I had growing up to, you know, losing all of my friends, um, to falling in love with the first, the, the, the only guy I've ever loved uh, who didn't love me back. Everything that I'd ever thought was crammed into that first album. Second album, uh, everything had started coming to a really nice plateau and the songs was had done amazing and they'd had their moment and they were still having moments, but the label were like, you know, this is the time for you to go away and write your second album kind of, you know, in your own time. For me, I draw an experience for my songs. I draw on life experience and because I was writing day in, day out, like I was running out of inspiration, basically. I needed to, I needed to live and I wanted to, you know, experience and, and feel um, for the second album, but yeah, the second album has been a bit of a journey, but it's actually matured with me, you know, as an artist, as a as a as a proud gay guy, as like a, as a songwriter, as a person. Um, I've matured, and the album, I think the album shows that. What's it like to record at Abbey Road? Oh my God, like insane! In fact, one of my friends, had, I, I posted a picture of me at the Abbey Road entrance, and one of my friends texted me, and he was like. I've just been listening to the Beatles album and then I see your, your picture flash up and you're recording in the same place. Like, for me to like look back at moments like that, of course my manager goes, oh, do you want to record at Abbey Road for your second album? I'm like, hell yeah. But then when I sit and think about it, I'm like, I just recorded like <laughs> at Abbey Road. Like the Beatles just walked across that zebra crossing. I just casually walked across it as if it's any zebra crossing in the UK. Like it's just, it's not, 
I can't put it into words. It's very, it's almost like dreaming it and then realizing you're not dreaming, if that makes sense. It definitely keeps me excited about my career and excited about what's to come. And yeah, it's, it's pretty special. What music do you have on repeat lately? I'm listening a lot to Harry Styles' new album. Uh, I think that's an absolute bop. Watermelon Sugar is just my jam. I love The Weeknd's new album. For some reason, I've gone back to 80s music. I'm listening to a lot of Fleetwood. To answer your question more directly, Watermelon Sugar. What is your favorite cover? I mean, Make You Feel My Love by Adele. To make you feel my love. Originally by Bob Dylan. I mean, insane. Who would you love to collaborate with? I think magic comes out of the, the, the collaborations that you wouldn't expect. And, you know, for me, I would love to work with somebody as different to me as somebody like Cardi B or Calvin Harris. And then I would do something as similar as singing with Adele or Sam Smith. You know what I think as well? I think a, a, a male duet needs to happen. Shawn Mendes or Ed Sheeran or Charlie Puth, like holler at me and we'll make it happen.